What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Thomas of World Animal Foundation. Recently, I've got some inqu inquiries about doing a comparison video of the uh, Invisible Fence GPS dog collar and the much more established Spot On collar. So I thought, why not? Um, it's right up there with the Halo and the Spot On in terms of cost and uh, some of the features it offers. Um, there are a lot of similarities between them, so I figured it would be a good comparison breakdown between the two of them. You know, as everybody knows, and I'm, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I'm really into the Spot On. I've done a lot of different uh, reviews and comparison videos on the Spot On before. So uh, before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and let's do a full-fledged breakdown here between the Invisible Fence GPS Dog Collar and the Spot On. So before we get into the meat and potatoes, so to speak, I like to use um, old school terminology. Uh, let's kind of discuss exactly what we're going to be comparison, comparing here. Um, the spot on and the invisible fence have a lot of different features between the two of them. Well, I say different, but comparable features, I guess you should say. Um, they both have a lot of features that um, are worth comparing. Um, they're very similar in a lot of aspects. And I think just a full breakdown uh, comparing those features is worth your time. Uh, especially considering the cost of these smart collars. Um, I'm going to do so, uh, a comparison of the overall performance of them, um, how these products function on a day-to-day -day basis, batteries, um, you know, cell service, uh, G you know, how well their GPS functions, uh, things of that nature. Um, just to kind of give you a, uh, a bird's eye view of what we're looking at here, the uh, spot on allows you to set up an invisible fence outside that has to be a minimum of a half an acre or, or and it has to at least be 80 feet wide at its narrowest point. Now the invisible fence doesn't list a, uh, you know, a minimum, a minimum width, but they do say you have to have a minimum of three quarters of an acre to put it on. Anything smaller than that, it just won't function. I have actually tested that out and we'll show you that it does not function with under three quarters of an acre. Um, fortunately, my entire uh, yard front and back is a little over an acre, so I can actually use it. I was a little worried about it at first, but uh, when I stretched it out far enough, it works. But um, just kind of an overall view of the, you know, basically what you're getting here. Um, if you live in a suburban area, and uh, we'll get into this a little more in, later in the video, if you live in a suburban area, you got a small yard, um, really the spot on or the invisible fence, especially the invisible fence are not going to probably not going to work for you unless you want to incorporate your neighbor's yard into your overall invisible fence area. All right. For those of you interested in the cell service side of things, um, you do have to have cellular service for uh, both of these smart collars. Unfortunately, the invisible fence requires a subscription plan that you are locked into and they only have one simple subscription plan that is $99 a year. Fortunately, they offer the first year free. I don't know if they will continue to do that or if that's for all customers, whatever. If it's just a time frame thing, I have no idea. I went ahead and got the first year free. But um, after that, it's $99 a year for the rest of the time you own the collar or, if, or as for, for as long as it works. The uh, spot on does require a subscription for tracking only. If you're just creating your invisible fences, you want to contain your dogs inside those invisible fence areas. Um, you don't have to pay any kind of subscription. Um, and uh, technically uh, you're tracking your dog while your dog's in your yard. If you have a very, very big yard, you know, multiple acres that you're covering, you can keep track of your dog within those boundaries without spending an extra dime whatsoever. And we'll get more into the price info here in a little bit. All right, the invisible fence setup is pretty straightforward. You got to enter all of your profile information. It's a, just the typical thing you get with any smart caller, just about. I mean, that goes for Tractive, 5 Series, Spot On, Halo, Invisible Fence. You name the caller. If it's got a smart app with it, you're going to have to go through a profile uh, setup. And that's basically what this is. And I'm also not going to run through the spot on to compare it because they're remarkably similar and there's just not enough there. Uh, if you've seen any of my previous spot on videos or you can go back and watch some of my uh, spot on reviews and videos. I've got a full setup procedure in there and it's almost identical to this one. And um, I mean, they're all the way down to setting up the weights and, you know, the profile pics. If you want to add that background images, if you want to add that. Um, you know, the fence building and all that stuff, which is a part of this video separately as well. But um, the uh, profile setup is important, especially if you're going to do multiple fences. 
Uh, it helps you keep track of your dogs, which fence you want, and uh, you know, naming your different fences as they apply to each collar of your dog. The only difference between invisible fence and spot on is invisible fence comes with this base station. And this base station is your charging base and it also connects with your Wi-Fi. So you're also basically setting up your base as you're setting up the collar. So that I mean the spot on has a base, but it just typically slides into the little thing and it's the, the base itself is just more of a cradle than anything else. And uh, in this situation here, the cradle does a little bit more than your typical, you know, cradle. And uh, as a matter of fact, there are some things you can do with the collar with the invisible fence with it on the uh, cradle. And there are some things you can't do unless it's or unless it's off the cradle. So that does take a little bit of uh, figuring out as you set everything up. All right, as far as your subscriptions and uh, fence creation is concerned, uh, there is no subscription for fence creation with the spot on. You can walk your fence out. You could draw it out. I would recommend walking because it's far more accurate. And you can create up to 1,500 posts. You have unlimited custom fences, unlimited keep out zones, home zones, and you have an off grid mode. Home zones turn off your collar to prevent false corrections and warnings. The off grid mode allows you to create new fences even when you have no service. This is absolutely huge for people who uh, like RVers. For people who like living off grid, you got many homes and you're out there, or if you like to boondock a lot in your RV, no matter where you go, you can still create an invisible fence with the off grid mode. The invisible fence GPS dog collar does require a subscription. Um, I was happy to discover that my first year is free, which is fantastic, but after that, it's $99 per year and you can't get out of that. You can't use the collar without it, you can't do anything without it they don't offer any other alternatives no monthly payments uh no other annual or biannual uh different types of subscriptions it's just one single 99 dollars a year subscription you are limited to 32 posts and you have a maximum of 20 custom fences you can create your boundaries must be 25 feet away from the bu uh, buildings roads any kind of you know man-made object whatsoever um, this is the thing that irritates me the most about the invisible fence because it requires you to create the fence 25 feet away from your home, which I did not do during this exercise because it makes no sense. The dogs have to go outside through the door, which means they have 25 feet of space to cover before they are even inside the invisible fence area. I don't like that. Um, so to me, it is the biggest, single biggest hit against the invisible fence is that 25 foot um, separation from everything. Um, whenever you want to create a new fence to add something, add a new fence to your invisible fence GPS, um, your collar has to reboot with a spot on. It just uploads it just like that. No problem. All right, this is the tracking test. Now, just like I did with the uh, breach test, I have the collar on my shoulder and I'm just kind of moving across the yard here and notice that the dog paw is behind me and it really should be much closer to me or at least snapping to my location every now and then because I have the collar with me and uh, obviously the uh, blue dot moving around here is me. Strangely enough the collar is not moving at all and I've actually come back to the position that I was in earlier gone past it now I'm approaching the house here and the collar still has not updated to my position now invisible fence does do 60 second updates so just looking at things here we're now at the 46 second timer and i'm still moving and that's no adjustment there we've got seven more seconds and the collar is still sitting out in the middle of the yard at the 60 second mark moving back towards the house and the collar is still sitting out in the yard even though it's on my shoulder boom there we go finally at one minute and nine seconds all right, here we are with the spot on collar and let's see if we can get it to snap to me. Okay, I did not go inside my house. I'm actually outside, all right? Just like the invisible fence collar, the collar is uh, wrapped around my shoulder like I did for the uh, breach testing and I'm just kind of walking around the yard here, seeing how well the collar tracks with me. Now, the spot on is supposed to update every six seconds or so. As you can see here, it looks like it's updating a little bit quicker than that. Um, far better than the invisible fence, which uh, 
uploads or um, updates every 60 seconds or so. As you can see earlier, that thing was just sitting in the yard no matter where I went. And I think that's an important factor to consider because if you've lost your dog and you're panicking and you're trying to find your dog, um, every minute counts, every second counts. And that's a full minute that it took. And in actuality, it took a minute and eight seconds. But as you can see, the spot on is pretty much keeping up with me as I move along. With the spot on, you have several different settings in terms of corrections. Um, you've got vibration only, you've got static plus vibration or static only. Now the static, the static corrections, I don't personally use, but you have a high variety of different choices to go, uh, go with. There are 30 levels of static correction for the spot on. There are only 10 levels of static correction for the invisible fence. As you can see here, the invisible fence. Um, stuff is a little more limited. Um, you got the vibration before boundary and the 15 second alert tone after breach. All right, in terms of charging and battery level, the spot on typically has a 24 hour battery. You get about 25 hours with the spot on Omni. I have the Omni and I have the uh, spot on the previous version. Um, in general, you could probably cut about an hour, hour and a half off of that. Um, just That's just the way batteries are. Uh, it takes about, I'd say, an hour, hour and a half to charge. I do use a 20-watt charger, so that helps out a lot. Um, it gives a little bit of a boost. Uh, the invisible fence is a 48-hour battery. It takes about three to four hours to charge. And um, just sitting it out, not doing much with it, I've noticed it's lasted about three days before I had to put it on the charger. Um, actually using it extensively, I'd say you're pretty much right around that range of 46 to 48 hours, uh, probably maybe a little bit less. It's hard to judge the time exactly right, but it does feel like it lasts two days. So it's definitely a more extensive battery. Now, both collars, the spot on and the invisible fence GPS collar have different types of antennas. And this is an important distinction to make because it really, really matters if you have a lot of trees on your property. If you have a lot of trees on your property, then, you know, obviously the spot on has the forest mode. It has an active antenna in it, and it is very, very good at uh, penetrating the trees and strengthening your GPS signal by reducing, you know, all the uh, reflection effects and things of that nature. The um, invisible fence has a passive antenna in it, and it updates slower. Um, it does not do well with trees, and I have a heavy tree canopy in my backyard, so uh, running this testing, I'm having to make sure that I keep the invisible fence area where I walk in and out of the uh, um, area here in, in uh, a minute. I'm going to get into the testing. Whenever I walk and cross the boundary, I'm making sure that I'm in an area that doesn't have trees over it because it's the best way to test the invisible fence, in my opinion. Um, I will walk under the trees with it as well, just to kind of see where it goes. But uh, with that passive antenna, it's going to have a less aggressive signal uh, through those trees, and it it will probably be problematic. Uh, just testing it on my own without using a video, without anybody watching me, um, it did not do so well up under the trees. And I have a lot of trees back there, so that's a significant thing, especially for people who have. If you're like me, you got a lot of trees on your property. Invisible fence may not be for you. Luckily enough for me, we actually have a disc golf course right out here behind my home. It's an 18 hole course. Some of it's heavily wooded as you can see here, and some of it is wide open. This is the perfect place to draw out some fences and do some tests on both the invisible fence GPS collar and the spot on. So let's check it out. All right, we're gonna do this again using my premium high quality termite infested sticks as my marking points. I've drawn my lines exactly as the spot on was drawn and used both the invisible GPS collar and the spot on collar as reference points while drawing out the line. That way they exactly match. So this is the invisible GPS collar and we're gonna go ahead and walk off, see what happens with our fence. Shake it a little bit to make sure that it's got some good signal. Nothing on the first line. Nothing on the second line. Fence is indeed active. Go into the woods. Hell, I may lose range on my, uh, 
microphone trying to work this. So far, absolutely nothing. Now keep in mind we're in the woods and invisible fence or the invisible GPS fence does not have the same kind of forest mode that the spot on does. Let's just try walking around in a circle here. See if we can get some sort of life from this collar. Well, there went my termite infested stick. I don't think it's very useful anymore anyway, do you? See the little blue light flashing, it is active. I'm not sure what the deal is, but the collar is active. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and walk this out. I've got my two sticks standing out there as reference points. The inner one is a reference to the inside of the barrier when you get your warning. And the out one there is obviously when you breached, you're outside the invisible fence and you get your second alert. So let's go ahead and walk it out and see how the spot on holds up. All right, it's going off the first time for the warning and I'm about four feet inside this stick. All right, there's my breach. I'm about two feet inside this stick. This is a heavily wooded environment. So this thing is using forest mode, which gives it a much more accurate GPS in areas like this. So I'd say overall, that's pretty good. All right, for this portion of the test, both the invisible and the uh, spot on GPS, we're gonna do on the outside. There's uh, no, no tree cover here, very little cloud cover in the sky. And the boundary is halfway across this concrete pad here, which you can see on the satellite image. So that is the inner boundary and the outer boundary is at pole center right there. They line up just about right so that we can get a good, good idea of how effective and accurate both, both of the uh, GPS collars are. All right, just so everybody's aware, it's I know it's daylight and I have a wide view set up, but if you can see that blue dot showing that the collar is active, I promise spot on does not pay me for this stuff. It won't be sending me a check. I'm hoping the invisible GPS fence here will rehabilitate itself after that uh, disaster in the woods there. So about 15, 20 feet to the center here. Let's go ahead and walk it off with the invisible fence GPS collar. A lot of walking today. On the concrete pad at the halfway point, nada. Wooden post, nada. Walk on out into the woods some. Maybe we'll get something. Hopefully my mic doesn't die. All right, I'm about 35, 40 feet from that concrete pad foundation and nothing. Looks like my mic is still on. I didn't know I'd be doing all this walking today. I'm trying to shake it, get it to... We're in bright open sky here and I'm not getting anything from it. I'll stand here for a second. Try it again. For those of you wondering why I'm shaking it, it's often a way to kind of get the collar to, uh, it works very well with the halo. Reorient itself, I guess is the right term. Stand outside the zone here for a second. I know this is a long video, but I want to give it a chance. Now, according to the invisible GPS fence, it updates every 60 seconds. Surely that does not mean breaching the invisible fence. You get a full minute that you have to wait for an update here. I'm still shaking it. 
fun stuff. Probably boring everybody to death. Y'all don't go to sleep on me now. Gonna take forever to upload this video. It's just me standing in the woods shaking the collar. If anybody walks by right now, they'll probably call the cops. I'm on public property. Shaking a collar on my shoulder. Nothing wrong here. Okay, I'm done with it. All right, we're going to kick things off with the spot on GPS. Um, everything is all set up. The collar is activated. The fence is loaded to the collar. Remember in the uh, satellite image, I got that first boundary set on the halfway point of that concrete pad. And that outside boundary is that pole just beyond it. So let's go ahead and walk it out and see how the GPS collar or the uh, spot on collar does. All right, got my first warning. And I'm standing on the concrete pad. Second warning, just past the halfway mark about two and a half maybe three feet shy of the pole so we're within that four foot range just walk it back all right safely back inside the border collar goes off now that i'm walking home and i'm not even in the same zip code anymore the collar wants to go off how about that Now let's talk price. And when um when I talk about price with these collars, it's it's a big deal because they are expensive collars, and it really boils down to the value you're getting from the collar versus that price. I mean, if you buy cheap, you get cheap. When it comes to these collars in general, uh, neither of these collars is cheap. Uh, the invisible fence is six hundred ninety nine dollars, and obviously the ninety nine dollar a year subscription. Um, hopefully they continue with the, you know, allowing you to have the first year free and give you a little bit of time to recover from dropping $699. Um, like I said earlier, I don't know if they're going to continue that or not. I'm just, I happen to get lucky. I, I knew the subscription was coming, but when, once I got the collar, I set everything up and, uh, I realized I was going to get the first year free. I was very happy about that. Um, the spot on is $999. And I mean, let's be honest, after taxes, we're talking about over a thousand dollars for a smart collar. Um, but you get a lot of value with the spot on. And, um, uh, if you've seen any of my previous review videos, um, and my comparison videos talking about the spot on, it is hands down my favorite collar. It works really, really well, especially, uh, since I have a lot of trees back there and that tree canopy is concerning or it's a, it's an issue for a lot of smart collars out there. So I feel like overall getting a lot more value for that extra price of the spot on. Now they did run a spring sale that went well into the summer where they knocked hundred dollars off the price point. I have not checked recently. I don't think that hundred dollars off is still there, but if you're interested in the spot on, that may be worth doing, taking some time looking for some codes. You know, we offer codes periodically as well, um, to try to knock off some of that price or catch them during a spring sale or a fall sale or a winter sale or whatever it is spot on's doing. Um, you want to catch that sale, knock some of that price down a little bit. And, um, I, I can't say you'll get it down to where the invisible fence is at 700 bucks, but you know, you could save a little money if you're careful and you just don't run out there and grab one immediately. Um, check for codes, wait for that sale. It's worth it. But overall, even at a thousand dollars, the, the spot on to me, you're getting, you're getting that value back and you're, that's exactly what you're buying is peace of mind and value. So to me, it's worth it. After some initial testing with the invisible GPS fence and the spot on uh, GPS fence out in my backyard, I did an original conclusion. Then I decided to take it out into a more open spot, a more open area, and a more heavily forested area, which is out in my local disc golf course across the road. And the invisible GPS fence did absolutely abysmal. I mean, it was absolutely disgusting. It wouldn't do anything that I needed it to do. And it didn't even go off until I left the area. And, uh, of course you saw, and you know, it's just, that's, this is a multi hundred dollar smart collar and they have got a lot of work to do to fix the software and hardware in this thing, because that passive antenna is weak and it doesn't work in the forest or, you know, with a heavy tree canopy. And it obviously doesn't even work when you get it out in a, underneath a bright oak open sky it wasn't even cloudy out there were a few wisps of clouds off in the distance but uh i think the spot on again has proven that it is the superior product um it did exactly what it says it's going to do um there was the occasion outside where it went off a few feet 
um, shy of the inside border and the outside border for the invisible fence, but um, you can chalk that up to fence drift and it's still within the four foot give or take zone. So uh, to me, the spot on is just, it's still an outstanding smart collar. I, rec I highly recommend it. I know it's on the expensive side. You know, it is what it is, but um, there you have it, folks. That's uh, the invisible GPS collar versus the spot on collar. Um, I really appreciate everybody watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Um, be sure to comment. Always try to jump on there and answer uh, your questions, comments, and concerns anytime I get an opportunity, which is not all the time, but I do my best. And uh, again, thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.